I caught my wife cheating with two men in our bedroom, so I ruined them all and got revenge by doing this. Hello everyone, I'm 33 male. Before I delve into my story, my question is, what would you do if you walked in on your wife whom you trusted so much, making out with two men on your bed? The first time I met my wife, Tracy, 29 female, was at the movies. I had gone to watch a newly released movie with my friends, and she was there with her girls gang. We kicked things off that day. Soon, we started seeing each other. We did it for a year, and eventually married. What started as mere friendship became one of my saddest love stories. At the beginning of our marriage, it felt like being married to Tracy was a blessing. We were happy together, and I did all I could as a man and her husband to support her dreams and push her to be more. And for the first two years, we had a good marriage. Tracy was also sweet, supportive, and smart. I'd love to say that she was everything I wanted in a woman. A great cook, a fantastic personality, an elegant person, and she was truthful. If there was anything I loved in her the most, there was her truthfulness. While Tracy worked in a fast food restaurant, I was a graphic designer and worked with the organization that printed banners, billboards, design, etc. We both earned a decent amount of money, but I did most of the spending at home because Tracy used her money to pursue her passion. Before Tracy and I married, she told me being an actress was her childhood dream, but she never got the opportunity to do what she loved because her parents did not support her dreams. Her parents insisted she study something else in college because being an actress was not as noble as she saw it. When Tracy told me about her lifelong dream and her interest in still becoming an actress, if it was okay by me, I told her it was fine. For someone who didn't pursue the profession I loved, I knew what it felt like to be passionate about something and not to do it. So, I supported Tracy in signing up for drama clubs, volunteer roles, and other acting roles that pushed her closer to her passion and dreams. Also, we planned that she would go to a theater art academy in the years to come once we had enough money saved. Another reason I supported Tracy to pursue her career as an actress was because she was naturally talented in acting. Aside from being an annoying drama queen, she was so good at acting, and before I met her, she had taken a couple of courses and watched about a thousand videos on YouTube. Doing all of these things showed how serious she was, and I didn't want to be the one who would stop her dreams. We paused on having kids because of her plans for Tracy and her academy, who planned to start having children after she graduated from the academy. At least, I believe she would land good roles in plays, dramas, or even movie roles by that time. Even think that it was I who kept encouraging her to volunteer for dramas, plays, and other roles because she could land big roles by showing people how good and talented she was. I did everything because I wanted the best for her, and I wanted her to be successful. When Tracy asked if I was cool with her pursuing her passion as an actress, we were still in the first year of our marriage, and by that time, everything was still a lovely dovey between us. When never fought or had any serious arguments, she was like a sweet peach who respected and treated me with love. For that first year, Tracy kept applying for different volunteer roles online, but couldn't get anything. There was a time when she even got tired of applying because she wasn't getting any response. She decided to focus on her new job, but I kept encouraging her not to give up. Luckily, months after we celebrated her first anniversary, she got a response from one of her applications. It was a play, and they wanted a couple of new actors and actresses. Tracy was over the moon when she got the mail, and I was so happy for her. The good thing was that the screening was held in the same town we lived in, so she had enough time to prepare. When D-Day came, Tracy passed her screening, and she was selected. She was so happy when she broke the news. Another good news was that they would pay them for their time, too, and the rehearsals for the play were mainly on Saturdays and Sundays. I didn't know where to expect Tracy to change entirely once she started rehearsals. The first few weeks over her rehearsals, nothing changed between us. Our communication was still excellent, and we did everything we used to do. The only difference was that we spent less time on weekends than before. The rehearsal occupied her weekends because she would wake up in the morning, clean the house, cook, leave for rehearsals, and return in the evening. Even though I wasn't comfortable with the new development, I couldn't voice it out because I didn't want to blow her a first official opportunity. Besides, her weekend conversation was greater than what she earned the entire week. As weeks passed, Tracy and I started to become distant. To keep myself busy, I started playing video games, hanging out with some friends, 
or inviting them over to my house. My friends were people I had known since high school and college, so I trusted and listened to them. When I told them about Tracy's passion of reacting and her gig that took her time, one of my friends, Eric, told me to monitor Tracy closely because there were rumors of women sleeping with their directors to land good roles. But I discarded his advice and assured them that Tracy wasn't like that and didn't sleep with anybody to get the role because she was very talented. Stupid me, yeah. With my response, they didn't talk about her again. The only advice me to monitor her closely because new actors and actresses like Tracy had high infidelity rate. I didn't take their words to heart because I was 100% sure that at the time, that Tracy wouldn't do anything to hurt me or ruin her happy marriage. But despite not taking their words to heart, it still remained in my head and subconsciously. I found myself being weird about Tracy and asking her weird questions. When Tracy noticed how different I had become, she complained about the questions I had asked her and how I had been treating her. So I was forced to apologize and tell her what my friend said. After I told Tracy everything, she just laughed and said she couldn't cheat on me because she loved me so much. And in her words, you're the best husband in the world and only a foolish and ungrateful woman would cheat on you. And she said that I had to inter peace knowing that Tracy wouldn't cheat on me. I wish. I didn't know she was only doing what she knew to do best, acting, and that she had been cheating on me even before we had that conversation. Tracy changed so much in the following weeks in a way I can't even describe. Our conversation started feeling forced, and that excitement she had whenever she returned home disappeared. Before she changed, Tracy was literally a parrot. She would come home and tell me about everything that happened during their rehearsals. Even though I had never been to their rehearsals, I knew all the names of everyone who rehearsed with her, how they looked, and their different personalities. This was because Tracy told me everything about them. We were that close, and I always looked forward to her updates every weekend. But everything stopped. In addition to her withdrawal, Tracy started being defensive. She took offense to almost everything I said, even with all jokes that used to crack her up before. She started feeling like I was attacking her with my jokes, or I referred to her in most things I said. Then she upgraded her wardrobe. She had dresses she wore specifically on their rehearsal days, as they were pretty exposing. I complained about her outfits several times, but she didn't listen. She said they were the close in vogue, and I was old school. While she did all these, I thought she was only trying to keep up with the other actresses who dressed better than her. I knew she was competitive fashion-wise, so the last thing that crossed my mind was her cheating. I started getting suspicious when she would change her hairstyle every week, and was always on the phone talking with a man she claimed she was acting with. One day she did something that really pissed me off, and when I voiced out my anger, she yelled at me and walked out on me. It was the first time she did something like that, and I immediately knew I had to do something about it. Later that evening I talked to my friends when they came over, and they had bet that Tracy was already cheating on me. Even with all the signs and changes I had seen, I couldn't believe Tracy was cheating on me because I made a lot of sacrifices for her to get to the level she was. I argued with him that maybe Tracy was having a tough time, and she was taking out the frustration on me. They insisted that I was blinded by love, and that I should hire a private investigator if I wanted to find out if Tracy was cheating on me. I didn't like the idea of someone following Tracy around, but I subscribed to it because of her change in attitude. The following week I found a private investigator online and hired him to follow Tracy for a week. On the third day of the week, when the PI was following her, Tracy did not come home after her rehearsals. The following day, when she returned home, she said she went to a club for one of her fellow actresses' birthday parties. She had to crash with them at a nearby hotel because she thought it was safer than coming home from a far distance. The funny thing was, she didn't inform me about the birthday party and I kept calling her phone until 3 a.m. When she picked up the call by 3 a.m., she said she didn't hear it ring because of loud music in the background. Then she lied that she told me about the all-night birthday party, but I wasn't listening. I suspected she was lying, but I knew I would find out the truth because the P.I. was following her. For seven days, I didn't hear back from the P.I., and by the time I heard back from him, I was out of town to visit my parents. I was on my way home when the P.I. informed me that he had some things to show me, so instead of driving home, I went to meet him at his location. Meanwhile, Tracy did not know I was coming home that day. We spoke the day before, which was Friday, 
and I told her I'd be coming home on Monday morning because I felt I would spend more time with my parents, but I ended up returning on Saturday. When I met my PI, he showed me things that shattered me and made me speechless. He had photos and videos of Tracy with a blonde guy who turned out to be her fair partner. There were pictures of them making out in Tracy's car, a fair partner's car going shopping, eating out, and a video from the night Tracy told me she went to one of her fellow actors as birthday parties at a club and didn't hear the phone ring. Through that video, I found out that she was with him the entire night. They went clubbing together, but left around 10 p.m., and they drove to his apartment where she spent the rest of the night. So it meant she had seen my calls, but deliberately refused to take them. I was shocked that Tracy cheated on me. She looked like someone with whom I could build a promising future, but she blew that up. So after the PI showed me all of those pictures and videos, he told me he followed Tracy that evening too, and she was currently with her fair partner in my home before he left to call me. At that moment, I was so full of rage and I wanted to break things. I was too angry to drive, so my PI drove me to my house. When we got there, I met a blue Toyota Vinza parked in my driveway and it instantly recognized the car. It was the exact car I saw in the pictures and videos, and I instantly knew Tracy was in there with her fair partner. My PI opted to follow me, but I don't recall whether I agreed. The next thing I knew, I was in the house, and as I opened our bedroom door, I met Tracy and two men in the act of their positions. The tall blonde guy was on top of Tracy, and the other man was sucking her down. I was wild with anger, and didn't know which of the men to attack first. Tracy wore one of those sluttish, netty lingeries, and her two hands were cuffed to the bed. She tried to get up when she saw me, but her movement was restricted. I attacked the blonde guy while the other man picked up his clothes and scurried away like a rat. Thankfully, my PI had come in with me, and he stopped me from committing murder. While all this happened, Tracy was still cuffed to the bed and already started begging me. She said I was mistaken and was only rehearsing her role for the play with the men. Hearing her stupid excuse and rage, I felt like choking her in that vulnerable position but I left the room and told her to be out of my house by the time I returned. After I left the house with my PI, he told me that he had recorded everything and shared the video with me. I didn't know what to do with the video, but I still took it from him. That night, I crashed at one of my friend's places. I was so embarrassed that he was right about Tracy and her new acting career. What was even more heartbreaking was Tracy having a threesome in her room and in her bed. When I got home the next morning, Tracy was still in the house. She didn't go to her rehearsals because she knew she had messed up. When I met her at home, my anger escalated and I kicked her out of the house and threw her stuff out on the lawn. While she begged me, she kept saying that I was making a mistake and I should let her explain what really happened. She stayed outside for almost an hour, shouting my name and pleading to let her in. But after acting like she was remorseful, she became abusive, called me names, and left afterward. This happened last week and I finally dared to share it here because I have not been myself since the day I caught Tracy with those two guys. I don't know how all of this happened right under my nose. I wasn't a simp that over-pampered Tracy or anything. We shared the bills, she did most of the chores, and I always controlled my emotions around her. I was saying this because I've seen stories where most men ignore the red flags. Now that I think of it, I should have started my investigation from the moment our communication dropped and she upgraded her wardrobe. But is that how marriage is meant to be? Suspect your spouse when he or she gets new clothes or stops talking to you like they used to because they're always tired when they return from work. I don't think so. The most annoying thing is that she has been calling my phone nonstop since I kicked her out. I've been thinking of the perfect revenge and want to show the video I got to her director. Update 1. Hello everyone. Thank you for your comments. I'm glad you all don't think it's too extreme. So someone commented that I did a little investigation on the second guy in the video, and I did. Guess what guys? I discovered he's bi and is currently in a relationship with Tracy's director. Tracy's director is homosexual, and I can imagine how angry and betrayed he will feel when he finds out that Tracy seduced his boyfriend. Speaking of Tracy, she showed up in my place three days ago. She looked so miserable and her eyelids were swollen from crying. Unfortunately for her, my friends read home when she came to beg me. Although they didn't say anything to her, their body language and eye rolls annoyed Tracy. She got so annoyed to me hanging out with my friends while abandoning her that she yelled at me. So this is it, Mike? 
You'll let your friends disrespect your wife like this because of a small disagreement between us. The whole time Tracy was pleading with Mel in the porch, I didn't say her do anything. I was inside the house listening to her, but when she shamelessly made this statement, I charged out of the house to give her the hearings of her life. But my friend stopped me. At that moment, I was ready to be arrested for assault and wanted to be worthy of the charge. Before she left my house that day, she made a scene. She started talking about all the promises we made to each other and how I promised to grow old with her. I was so angry, but I couldn't do anything even if I wanted to. After waiting for a while and she didn't get any response from me, she asked about the theater art academy that I promised to support her. I wanted to go out and tell her to go to her affair partners for support, but I wanted her to stop talking and leave already so I didn't respond. After waiting for a while, she eventually left in chain. I've already contacted a divorce lawyer, and once the papers are ready, he will send them to her to sign. Concerning the revenge, I will do as you guys have said. I understand that showing the video to her director might not destroy her career, but it will ruin everything she has worked hard for months. Sending the video to her director has even made me more excited now that I know Tracy cheated on me with her director's boyfriend. Thank you everyone, I will make another update soon. Update 2. Hey guys, I'm so excited to make this update, because things became messier for Tracy than I expected. After I made the last update, it took me two weeks to search for her director online and I found him. He's just someone starting out in the movie industry as a director, and so far, he has been making waves. So Tracy's director and I fixed a day to meet each other, and he showed up. He was hooked on meeting me because I told him I had something to show him about his partner and one of his actors. When we met that day, I didn't waste time talking. We exchanged pleasantries and I showed him the video of his boyfriend, the blonde guy, and Tracy. He was so disappointed and heartbroken that he cried there. No kidding. He told me he suspected his boyfriend was doing something with one of the cast members, but he wasn't sure because he never caught them. Also, he claimed his boyfriend had cheated on him once in the past, but he, the director, forgave him, his partner, because he pleaded it happened while he was under the influence of alcohol. Honestly, I wasn't so interested in what his boyfriend had done. I was more interested in what he would do to Tracy and her fair partner. When I asked him what he would do with them, he said he didn't think of anything yet. I told him it would be weak of him to let them go off the hook like that, especially after what Tracy did to him. To cut the story short, Tracy's director fired Tracy and her blonde affair partner, but I don't know if he broke up with his boyfriend after that. When Tracy was fired, I was glad to see her hard work scattered like dust in the wind. I wanted her to feel the pain of putting her 100% into something, but it ended up being destroyed by someone else. By the time Tracy got fired, the divorce papers were ready and my lawyers sent them to her. The day she got the papers she called me and begged that I shouldn't ruin everything we suffered hard to build. I told her she ruined it the day she started nursing the thoughts of cheating on me. I told her I was the one who showed the video that ruined her months of hard work with her director. I knew she would flip when she heard that, and she did. She said she knew I was jealous of her and hated that she could pursue her passion and I couldn't. I just laughed because I knew what she was trying to do, and I hung up the call. She signed the divorce papers two weeks ago and I am making this update as a divorcee. Although it hurts, I am glad she is no longer in my life. Thank you to everyone for all your comments and support. Second cheating story. I gave my cheating wife an ultimatum and blindsided her with divorce. I, 35 male, have been married to my wife, 37 female, for 7 years, and we were together another 3 years before that. We had a daughter, 5 female. On the outside, our marriage appears to be perfect. She and I own a nice house with a good school district, have a great kid and both work full time. Her job requires her to do some travel and wants her in the office 3 days a week. My job does not pay as well, but I work completely remote and spend a lot of time taking my daughter to soccer or doctor's appointments, as well as keeping up around the house. Before anyone asks, this is not a weight gain issue. I am active and fit and my wife is the same. For the past four or so years, my wife has shown basically no interest in her marriage and acts more like my roommate than partner. We have basically no romance or intimacy. When I say intimacy, I know how some people will jump to sex. But to me intimacy means acting like a couple, holding hands, kisses, cuddling, and obviously sex. 
None of those are really things my wife wants to do, and it makes it painfully obvious that she isn't interested. Before she and I were very much an amazing couple, my wife also shows no interest in my life. She has forgotten important events like her anniversary and my birthday. Our last anniversary, she said she needed to cancel the dinner plans I made for the two of us because she had to work late on a Friday and travel for work the following week. I brought this up to my therapist who suggested couples therapy and is willing to give some recommendations. I brought this up to my wife who immediately shut it down saying, there's nothing wrong with me. I don't eat therapy. I have made multiple suggestions to her for how we can possibly improve our relationship. Family vacation? Your daughter won't appreciate it. I don't see what five-year-olds wouldn't want to go to the beach for a couple of days, but maybe I'm wrong. A romantic getaway for her and I? No, I'm too busy at work. Or can we just spend time together at home? Taking our daughter on a bike ride and going out to lunch on a weekend. I just want to relax. So I gave up trying to initiate anything with her and recently began looking for an out. I watched my parents in a failing marriage for a decade and don't want to put my child through that. I talked to a lawyer and got papers ready and can buy a condo in town to keep our daughter in the same school district with her friends, since I can't afford our house by myself. I recently confronted my wife when our daughter was at a playdate. I told her that I am seriously considering leaving her since I feel as though I don't matter to her and our relationship is never a priority to her. I told her I have an exit plan and if she doesn't make changes by the new year, I'm going to file for divorce and full custody. She and I got into a big fight where she basically told me I was manipulative and an a-hole for blinds and anger like that. I told her that none of this would be an issue she cared about us, or at least pretended to. I told her I don't want our daughter to see how unhealthy our relationship is. All of this happened yesterday. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for what I said to my wife and our argument after? Edit. I have brought up my concerns about our marriage to her multiple times. Things usually improve for a short while, but are quickly back to the status quo in a week or two. Let's see what the community judges. First up, I'm sorry to say this, but your wife doesn't care. The first thing she says to you once you mentioned about it ending it. She said, I was manipulative and an a-hole for blinds and anger like that. First off, you didn't blind tend her. You mentioned it to her and she didn't want to listen. Secondly, you also asked about couples therapy and she dismissed you. Every time you try something, she doesn't want to know. She doesn't seem to care about you or your daughter. She doesn't care about your anniversary or your birthdays. She does not seem to care at all. You are the one that is being there for your daughter and spending quality time. Are you sure she's not having an affair? Personally, I wouldn't wait till the end of the year. Ego us up. The OP replies, I really hope she's not having an affair. I really don't want to think about the person I want to spend my life with doing something like that. Alright, we have a update. Hi everyone. First of all, thank you for all of your replies and messages. I received a ton and haven't been able to reply to them all. It has been a crazy couple of weeks unfortunately. My marriage is over and after talking to my wife I realize it has been for a long time. The day after my post I began the divorce process with my lawyer. Everyone who said I was an a-hole for saying I was going to get full custody, that is true. I was angry, frustrated, and said something I shouldn't have. We are going to split custody with me having weekdays and my wife having weekends. That said, everyone who said she was cheating, congratulations, you were right. She has been for around four years now, which is about the time she started withdrawing from her marriage. She has been cheating with this coworker because she felt like she was not attractive after having a child and I was busy with work and childcare. More recently, she has begun to develop feelings for him and was considering leaving me for him, which she is now free to do. When I gave her this help to meet him, she was surprised that I was considering leaving her and thought I knew about her affair at the time. We sat our daughter down and explained that we are splitting up, but we both love her more than anything. My daughter was understandably upset and is having a tough time. I have been looking into therapy options for my daughter and told her that she can always tell me about how she is feeling. That is the hardest part of everything so far. My wife and I are going to be geographically close. I am going to be moving into a condo in early January, and my wife is going to be moving in with her co-worker about 15 minutes away. With the sale of our house, I will be able to pay off a large portion of my new home. According to the lawyer, we can have everything wrapped up by New Year's if it goes smoothly. But with the holidays, 
I will be happy with early January. In the meantime, I am going to start rebuilding my life. I did not get married with the intention of getting divorced, but here we are. I am going to work on myself and my relationship with my daughter. Starting with a vacation. I am going to surprise her with a trip to Disney this winter. It will be expensive, but I really want to make her happy and create some happy memories. I am going to miss her on weekends. Maybe one day I will explain this all to her when she is in her appropriate age and we can talk about it more. In the meantime, I am going to work on myself and try to be the best version of me that I can. I don't know what the future holds, but I guess I will know eventually. Let's get a couple of community reactions right quick. Next one. A little advice. Have a lawyer draw up a document that says you are allowed to travel with your daughter as the sole parent for up to two weeks etc. and allow it to include trips out of the country. It can be done with both lawyers okay it and it being notarized. Save lots of hassles in the future especially if you get a new love in your life. Another comment says, showing grace in times of adversity is a real challenge. You are going to be okay. Better than I was in my divorce. Keep this level head of yours processing things the way you have been. Maturely, and you will make it through this process better than most. It sounds like you have your kid most of the time which is good. You are obviously the more mature parent. Feeling unattractive is such an immature reason to cheat. All in all, your ex-wife is the a-hole. 